I've designed hundreds of dashboards over my time in my data career. But one thing I've realized, which is always something difficult to manage and handle, is to build a dashboard accurately to a stakeholder's requirements. And one way in which you can ensure that is to make sure you are mocking up your dashboards correctly, accurately, and in a format that anyone can access and read and provide feedback on. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that using nothing but simple Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's begin. So guys, welcome. So this is Sid Sweet Shop and it is a dashboard for Sid Sweet Shop. And this is a draft mockup. So something that I would typically share with a stakeholder, my boss, my client, my manager, whoever that may be. And essentially you wanna start off with a PowerPoint deck and this will essentially hold and become the main body of the concept itself. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a title slide. Here you can see I've used good old chat GBT to produce me a logo real quick. And you can see on the on this page right here, we've got a what is the first first version of our dashboard. This is the main page. And then we'll also produce a second page uh, or I'll show you exactly what a second page could look like. And really we have all of this set up across a number of different slides. So here you can see I've mocked up six different different charts to six different visuals. I haven't given the bottom three any real depth or any real uh, detail, but you can see the kind of things that you can start to visualize. And all of this is done using the inbuilt charts. So here you can see we've got a sales trend for the sweet shop. We've got sales by category. We've got a percentage of sales displayed as a, as a pie chart. And the way I did this is quite simple, really. So here I'm just going to show you exactly how to produce something like that. So initially you want to sort of get rid of this title slide here. And really what you want to do is make sure you've got a blank canvas. So what we're going to do here is go insert. And this is how we're going to start marking up our, our visuals. We go to chart and then we can select column. And you can select from any one of these. I'm on a Mac, but it's the same on the on Windows. I'm just going to select a flat 2D column chart. What that does is it brings up a, a, a if you like, a default default dummy chart. And this is where you can start to kind of play around and edit yeah, with the design. So first thing I want to do is just make sure it's in a nice little tidy box. And as soon as you open this up, you'll be presented with a, a data screen. Uh, if, if you can't see this, the way to do it is to right click here, go to chart design and click edit data in Excel uh, or select select data. Either way, it'll get you to this screen right here. So what I want to do in this chart is, as you saw earlier, I want to produce a trend. So here my trended views over a number of calendar months. So I'm going to have Jan, Feb, I'm going to have March, have April. I'm just going to add a few more, May and June. And then here I can put in what will essentially be just a single value, really. I don't need multiple series, so I can get rid of that. As you can see, as I'm going through the changes, it's reflecting in the charts. And I'm going to have, say, 3.2, and I'm going to have 2.9. Uh, as you can see, sales started off fairly high, they climbed. Uh, but as we approach summer, you know, as you can imagine, sales of chocolates will inevitably fall during the summer because uh, of the temperature. So here, I don't really need a series, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to call it sales. So, and then what you can do is just close this. And now we've got a simple visualization going. And then what we can do is quickly add some chart elements. I'm going to add a chart title. So I'm going to call this uh, sales in dollars. Um, let's just say millions of dollars. And you can get rid of the legend or you can keep it. In my case, I'm actually going to get rid of the legend. And then what I'm going to do is just give it a different color, make it orange so you can go change colors. And you can even change the thickness of the bars if you like. So here we can go into real quick and format the, let's have a look at format in the data series. This is where the, the gap width is. We want to reduce the gap width. Perfect. And then what we want to do is add labels. So you go to add chart element, data labels. Uh, we can decide where we want this. We can put an outside end. So now we've got some, some nice little labels added to our chart as well. So that's our first chart done. And in the way I get this gray boundary, which I think looks really nice, is to simply insert, insert shape, 
and essentially you want to insert one of these square shapes right here and what you want to do is find a, a subtle color something like this this little very slight subtle gray you can see it's got a black boundary you want to remove the boundary or set the boundary to be the same color and then right click send to the back and there you go you've now got a little frame around your your chart so now what you want to do is is essentially multiply this how many times you wish obviously this is a a three by two grid you may have a two by two grid or you may even have sim simply two charts if you want but yeah in my case i've gone with a three by two grid and it's easy to replicate now so now if we were to do the same let's say we're doing the pie chart this time and again uh, it's pretty easy go insert go into chart and then make sure you select your pie um, we're gonna go with let's just say we go with the donut chart for now select on the donut chart and again by default you'll be presented with the with the spreadsheet view and here what we're going to do is have different categories so i'm going to call this one chocolates and if i can get my spelling right i'm going to call the next one gummies the third one i'm going to call potato chips or crisps as we call them in the uk uh, potato crisps and then the last one i'm just going to call soft drinks so now this is a not a sales but this is actually going to be essentially a, a share a percentage share so we're going to go to percentage share real quick okay done you can leave the numbers for now we can get onto the percentages in a moment but now you can see we've got our visualization going i'm just going to make that a bit small again just to readjust and i can put this one right here put the gray gray background around it and this is where we can start to edit now you've got a number of options when it comes to editing you can actually choose from the edit options here so we can do something like this or we can go something like this the only problem in doing that you have to make sure it aligns with the editing on the on the other charts that you have on the same page but i like to edit my own visualization so what i'm doing right here is right click here format data series and here you can adjust the donut size i'm going to make it really large and then finally you can even add data labels as i showed you earlier you'd go into chart design again and we're going to go to add chart elements and to go to data labels and we're going to put that in the center so let's have a look right here just make sure we've got the data labels let's go right click here add data labels okay done and then what we can do we change the data labels to percentages there we go so guys, just to show you how easy it is to edit in X in Microsoft PowerPoint, it's one of my favorite ways to produce mockups of dashboards. And I'm just gonna call this pin and share by category. And then I'm gonna show you guys a couple more things just before I wrap this up. So this is exactly how I create my mockups um, and I have been doing for the last few years now. And then what you want to do once you've got your mockups ready, once you've got your, you know, your graphics ready, you can then start to share this. So if you're using Microsoft at work, you'll most likely have OneDrive. So what you can do here is then go into, uh, you can obviously save this and then you can share this. Um, you go file and then you can go share and then you could share here and then you go into your OneDrive, give it a name and choose the users you want to share it with. But the other powerful thing about all of this is you can actually add comments. So if you go in the comments pane, you can actually see I've been adding comments already. So here you can see there's a comment and I've tagged in someone called James and the comment is hope this is what you wanted. So what James can now do is review this once I've shared it with him and even post back some feedback and say, hey Sid, um, this is great. Please go ahead with this uh and let me know if you need anything further and this is the best thing about doing mock-ups and concept work in powerpoint and then once you've saved this you'd get an automatic notification on your comment and again i've got another one here at the bottom this one is for mark again asking a similar question around you know the data points the visualizations and this is what i love about powerpoint it's so flexible in that you can just add comments and annotations wherever you go so guys typically what i would do is you know create a dashboard like this i'd add a few more detail i'd add filters you can add more commentary and here you can see i've created a second tab so you know some dashboards have multiple tabs this is a second tab here you might have a 
data in a table or series of tables, you might have a waterfall chart. Once again, you just use the same kind of format, look and feel. And if you have dashboards which are which are no longer valid designs, you can then move them into what I would call an appendix. So what I would do here is just create a new section, uh, add section, and then just call it appendix. And then this is where you can move your old designs. I'm just going to quickly control, control and undo this. But that's just a you know just showing you just how simple and effective it is to produce mockups and concepts, dashboard concepts entirely in Microsoft PowerPoint. So guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Really quick, you know, simple, effective kind of solution as to, um, to to fix what is otherwise slightly challenging problem, mocking up dashboards. Um, many people try and do it by playing with shapes. So you might you know draw loads of squares if you wanted to do say um, produce a series of, of charts you might produce loads of squares and that is really slow and cumbersome so here you can see I've got one square I've now got a second square and to produce this kind of work in this way it could take you a long time you know this is a lot this is quite monotonous and and actually very manual so this is why I prefer this kind of look and feel I prefer using the inbuilt dummy charts and then you can build on them to, to produce something really effective. So guys, do check out PowerPoint and all the features that are available to offer, especially with a commentary function and especially with OneDrive. I hope this is useful and yeah, do let me know if this is, helps in your job, in your work, in any project that you're doing at the moment, whether it's now or in the future. And yeah, I hope you like this content. If, if you like this content, do drop me a comment, do drop me a like, and do of course subscribe if not already. And I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.